Good afternoon. Over the next two days, NATO's defense ministers will uh, meet here at the NATO headquarters and uh, address a wide range of uh, different uh, issues. Uh, they will also address the situation in uh, northeast uh, Syria. And uh, uh, I'm encouraged by the fact that uh, over the last uh, days we have seen a significant uh, reduction in uh, violence, uh, in fighting. And uh, we have to build on that uh, to uh, work for a political uh, lasting solution of the crisis uh, in, uh, in uh, Syria. The situation is uh, still fragile. Uh, but at least uh, we have seen uh, some progress by the fact of, uh, that we have seen a reduction in violence over the last uh, days. Um, we will uh, address uh, also <coughs> all uh, NATO missions and operations <coughs> sorry, from the Balkans uh, to Afghanistan. Um, and we will of course also address uh, NATO's participation and contributions to the global coalition to defeat uh, uh, ISIS uh, and our training mission in uh, Iraq. <clears throat> During the uh, dinner tonight, we will uh, discuss uh, hybrid threats, hybrid tactics, and how NATO is responding for, uh, to that. Uh, also, uh, the importance of resilience of our societies. And uh, uh, I expect that uh, the ministers uh, will, uh, during the meeting, uh, agree on uh, uh, new uh, baseline requirements uh, for uh, telecommunication uh, resilience, uh, which also includes uh, requirements for uh, 5G uh, networks. Uh, then <coughs> we will uh, tomorrow uh, discuss the readiness of our forces um, uh, and burden sharing. Uh, we will uh, take stock of where we are and uh, uh, I will uh, once again highlight the importance of fair burden sharing, uh, both when it comes to spending, but also contributions and uh, uh, capabilities. And I will prepare <coughs> a, a report for the heads of state and government when they uh, meet in London in uh, December. And then uh, the last meeting tomorrow will be with our uh, partners in the rest of support mission, uh, where we will uh, discuss Afghanistan, uh, NATO is committed to our rescue support mission to train, assist and advise the Afghan forces. We strongly believe that the best thing we can do to create the conditions for a negotiated peaceful solution is to uh, uh, continue to support the Afghan forces. So Taliban understands that they have to uh, sit down at the negotiating table and make real compromises. And with that I'm ready to take some questions. <coughs> about the German proposal of a security zone in northern eastern uh, Syria and what kind of role could the NATO play in this? Also, I have, I have discussed this uh, proposal with uh, uh, Defence Minister Annegret kramp karrenbauer I think it is positive that NATO allies, and in this case Germany, have proposals, have ideas on how we can move forward, how we can uh, create the conditions for a lasting uh, political uh, solution. Of course, there are many challenges, uh, many questions that have to be uh, answered, uh, but uh, the idea of uh, trying to create some more uh, uh, agreed international uh, uh, framework for uh, the situation and the challenges we are faced with, uh, with in northern Syria uh, uh, is something which uh, I think that defence ministers, when they meet later on today, we'd like to discuss uh, because all NATO allies strongly support uh, the efforts to find a political negotiated uh, solution, an international agreed uh, solution, uh, and uh, the German proposal uh, is one element of, uh, of that. Uh, sir, how worried are you about the status of the ISIS prisoners in Syria? The U.S. says that it's the responsibility of Turkey now. Do you feel confident in their ability to keep a lid on this? And what happens if they can't? Also, I have stated several times that I am concerned about the risk uh, uh, that uh, the increased violence, the fighting, the instability we have seen uh, can uh, lead to that uh, ISIS fighters uh, who are in prison are able to escape or uh, are set free. And that's uh, exactly the reason why I think it's so important that we have seen some progress over the last days with reduced fighting, with uh, some reduction in uh, tensions. So uh, that uh, reduces the risk of uh, uh, ISIS fighters being uh, set uh, free. 
And one of the issues we will discuss uh, during our meeting today is how uh, NATO allies can do more uh, to provide su support to the counter-ISIL uh, coalition. Uh, we are, all NATO allies are part of the coalition. Uh, NATO is part of the coalition. Uh, we provide uh, support in different ways, including with the training mission uh, in uh, Iraq. But it is extremely important to make sure that uh, uh, captured ISIS uh, fighters are not set free. And therefore, those who are present on the ground has a responsibility to make sure that that doesn't happen, that they are uh, still uh, uh, in uh, captivity. Secretary General, another agency, Sherfetchetin. In light of the question asked by my colleague, um, along with the German proposal, there are ideas floating around that the United Nations troops should be based in the safe zone. I'd like to know if I know that NATO is not on the ground in Syria, but does NATO foresee a role for itself in the, in the creation of a safe zone in the <coughs> near future? There has been no call for a NATO mission in northeast uh, Syria. Uh, um, and uh, I think that uh, the way I understand the uh, proposal from uh, Germany or from, uh, from Defence Minister Annegret Kramp-Karrenbauer is that <coughs> there is a need for a, a UN uh, a decision and that requires a process in the UN uh, and of course uh, it's not possible today to say, to say whether that will be uh, easy or very difficult so uh, I think this is a proposal which has to be discussed more in detail before any decision can be made. Besides the German <coughs> proposal, would NATO be willing to take up a role in northern Syria if it came up? I think that if I now started to speculate about all possible and impossible options, I will only add to the uncertainty. Uh, we all now need to try to de-escalate, reduce tensions, uh, uh, look for a way for a political uh, uh, solution. And the best way of doing that is not to just throw in uh, all possible uh, and impossible options. There has been no call for a NATO mission in northeast uh, uh, Syria. I strongly believe that uh, what we need is an uh, effort to support a, uh, a political process, a, a lasting political uh, solution, and therefore also NATO strongly support the UN-led efforts uh, to find a political solution to the crisis in, uh, in uh, Syria. Associated Press, last <coughs> Secretary General Lorne Cook from the Associated Press. Uh, NATO's two biggest armed forces, and you mentioned uncertainty, they've been playing with fire in the, in the northeast of Syria. Um, if we look at Turkey with the S-400s, for example, if we look at Afghanistan, we have peace talks, but where the government wasn't really involved in those. We've heard the US are drawing down troops, although it seems to be an adjustment, but we're not quite sure. How, how helpful is that to, to NATO's coherence and, and certainty? And do you actually understand the, the policies of both presidents in Washington and in Ankara? We see differences when it comes to the situation in northeast uh, uh, Syria. Um, uh, and I have also clearly stated my uh, deep concern. Um, that's also the reason why uh, I welcome the fact that uh, two NATO allies, uh, uh, Turkey and the United States, agreed a joint statement uh, a week ago. And we have seen since then uh, some steps in the right direction. Uh, uh, especially uh, uh, the fact that we have seen reduction in uh, uh, violence. And we have to build on that to make further uh, uh, progress. Uh, when it comes to the more uh, bigger picture, uh, I think we have to recognize the, that uh, Northeast Syria is difficult, complex, and there is no easy way out. But when it comes to NATO more in general, uh, I think what we have seen is that actually NATO has implemented the biggest reinforcement of our collective defense in decades, the biggest adaptation of the alliance since the end of the Cold War. And NATO allies are doing more together than we have done for many, many years. Uh, the US is not in decreasing its presence in Europe, it's actually increasing uh, its military presence uh, in uh, Europe. Uh, we will soon have a big exercise with more US troops in Europe than we've seen for many, many years. And, um, and we also have stepped up our fight against uh, terrorism. We continue our mission in Afghanistan. And the reason why we are in Afghanistan is to uh, fight international terrorism. We have to make sure that the caliphate that was lost for ISIS in Iraq and Syria is uh, not re-established in Afghanistan. And that's the reason why we uh, continue uh, to stay in Afghanistan. And we have uh, played a key role in the global coalition to defeat uh, Daesh or ISIS all NATO allies. So, yes, the situation in northern Syria is difficult. We have seen differences between NATO allies. 
on that issue. But at the same time, as the Lions, we do more together and we stand together and we uh, do more together than we have done for many, many years. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you.